Hello, welcome to Survival ABCs. This video is in regards to a Nalgene water bottle survival kit. I have got a request for this from a good friend of mine. Um, so basically this is my take of what the survival kit and the Nalgene water bottle is. Um, I included the stainless steel cup with it because it is a plastic bottle after all. If it was a stainless steel bottle, I would just go with the stainless steel bottle. I wouldn't even bother bringing a cup with it. But I wanted a cup there so at least you can boil water to clean and purify your water with. Um, normally these cups of course would slip right off the bottom but uh, I add a little bit of duct tape to the bottom half of this bottle just a little bit just so you get that resistance there so that way this cup will stay on there and not come off otherwise I would have to go out and get a mesh bag to put this whole thing into but uh, anyways I thought I'd go through this pull it apart and show you guys what it's all about so like I said first items first is the stainless steel water uh, cup this is the GSI, uh, sorry, the GSI outdoors uh, water stain water stainless steel cup uh, first and foremost this is Gorilla duct tape this is the camouflage version I couldn't find my black tape so this is camouflage there's a whole lot more tape here on the top half than there is on the bottom half bottom half is just for the sake of the cup so this bottle holds uh, 32 ounces or 1,000 milliliters. So let's open this up. Uh, I've noticed in a lot of uh, be uh, videos about these bottles is that a lot of people don't include a bag to keep everything in. So I made a mental note to add a bag. So this is just a cheap Koglin's bag to keep everything into when I'm using the bottle for water. So. First things first here, I got a lot of elastic bands stuck in here so that when I do pull everything out I can at least keep them all together. So I kind of crammed everything in here so uh, I want to make a note right now that uh, I wanted to include some Ziploc bags. I didn't think of it until it's too late so I'm going to add some uh, Ziploc bags afterwards. Uh, this is from ba These are wet naps from Boston Pizza. I thought I'd include these into the kit for cleaning the pot as well as for wiping off your hands for wounds and stuff of that general sort. I got some of this uh, really cool looking uh, paracord here. It's like a desert camo type of uh, paracord. It's roughly about 25 feet there, give or take. I didn't think how hard it would be to take some things out. <laughs> I got some wet fire tinders in here for the sake of fire making. Those really kick ass by the way. You should definitely check those out if you haven't already. I got this really nice neck knife. It was really cheap but uh, it was deadly sharp believe it or not. I can also wrap some paracord around the handle for some nice grip on that. I got a nice little pocket guide here. Survival as well as uh, a little bit of medical in there information is good information because I'm not up to date with my my, my uh, first aid uh, nail clipper I know there's some people out there find these to be funny to include and clip but I do find them quite useful for popping blisters and you can also use the nail file to make uh, small little wood shavings for fire making purposes so let's throw this stuff there I got a uh, nice ferro rod, striking piece right there, fire making purpose. I love these tools, they're definitely very vital to have. <clears throat> I've got a pen in here. Um, my notepad couldn't fit in here, so actually another mental note I'm going to include is that uh, I do have to add some paper in here for writing purposes. I found one of these little, uh, this is a magnifying glass by the way, perfect for reading small print on maps as well as uh, uh, making fire as well. I found one of these, I can't remember where I found this, but uh, I definitely wanted to include it into the kit. Uh, I've got some Tylenol Extra Strengths, this is a little travel uh, container. You know, survival situations, you're obviously going to be under a lot of stress and you're awfully, obviously going to get a headache. And it's not even just that, even camping sometimes, or for me, I get to these headaches. So these really help me. Um, for other people, I'm not sure how good or bad they may be, but I do find them quite useful and quite good to have around. I can always try to keep a bottle of it in my first aid kit. I got the SOL uh, Slim Rescue Howler Whistle. These things are good really good for finding rescue. Uh, let's see. Also we have another SOL signaling mirror. This one still has the film on it so you gotta peel off the film 
and of course use the signaling mirror for the obvious. <coughs> Excuse me. So definitely nice to get to have, you know, definitely for day use. Not necessarily for the night use unless you have a flashlight, but even then you just use the flashlight. Uh, what else do we have in here? I got a friction saw. Um, normally these friction saws are not really all that good, but if you'd figure out how to make like a, almost like a bow saw, take a long stick and make a bow form, almost like a bow drill for making fire, I find these work really well with that. You know, when you're doing them like they show in the picture, it, re it really doesn't work at all. They break very easily, but if you use the bow draw technique, they really do kick ass. So definitely worth taking a look into. Faith has been restored when it comes to that. I have a speedy sharpener in here. As a lot of people say, your skill set is only as sharp as your blade. So for long term, it's nice to have one of these around. Sooner or later, you do have to sharpen it properly with a proper kit. But uh, these really work excellent in the field and they're very easy to use and I'll do a video about these in the near future. So. Next, of course, we got a small little compass, navigation, definitely a good idea to have something to have navigation with. You know, if you go entirely off of the sun, you know, obviously it, it's, you can only do that on a sunny day, but, uh, you know, these work all the time, and this is only about $6, and it's definitely well worth the money. These really, these are really awesome, by the way. Something else I have. I have one of these uh, military style can openers, uh, you know, if when it comes to a survival situation you may not have canned food, but in a bug out scenario or anything else of that sort, even if you bring some canned food with you, these are really, really nice to have. Uh, you can definitely use a pocket knife which has the can opener, but I find these are very useful to carry around with me and they really, really kick ass. I love these things. I got so many of them around that I use all the time. So, I can't seem to get my grip on it, but inside of there, that's a SOL emergency, um, emergency blanket, survival blanket. Uh, this is the uh, one per, or sorry, the two person one. This is the one that's uh, about a dollar or two more expensive than the single person one. I can't seem to get it out at the moment, but uh, earlier when I first stuck it in, I, I got everything in there. I tried pulling it out. I just couldn't really do it, so I'm going to leave it in there. You can see it. It's in there quite nicely. So, like I said, I wanted to include some Ziploc bags and uh, uh, one other thing I also wanted to include. There was a lot of other things I wanted to include into this uh, kit, but unfortunately I couldn't fit them inside the bottle. I had my spork tool, for example, I wanted to fit in here and I couldn't get it in there because of the fact that uh, it was too big. If I take a grinder and snip off the two ends that stick out on the fork on the little tool, I can definitely probably fit it in there, but then again, if I do that, I won't be able to tie it off to a stick anymore. So rendering it partially useless to me anyway. So, you know, a great thing with having a bag like this is that this may be cheap, but it does come with this little loop right here. So with all the stuff in the bag, I can tie with the, with the rope this around my shoulder and the bottle as well while I'm carrying the stuff. That way I don't have to carry it around by hand. I just loop it around my shoulder when I have this full of water. So. Also, with the duct tape, you, you can, in fact, use this for fire making purposes. I've mentioned it several times in previous videos, and I'm going to mention it briefly now, is that Gorilla duct tape is flammable, but when you do light this up, it does release a chemical in the air. It's not only bad for you, but it's bad for the environment. It is to be considered a last ditch effort. So don't be going this straight off the first thing right here, you know, that's, that's, this is the last resort, you know. But duct tape itself is good for repairs, help with uh, the blistering and other things, although that is a temporary fix, by the way. But uh, it does have its uses. So, you know, got a little bit of everything in here. There's still a couple things I want to add, like I said, and there was a lot of other things I wanted to add, but I can't because I can't seem to get them to fit through the bottle. Not a big deal, uh, but... Uh, you know, this is my first time making a kit inside of a bottle like this, so I definitely wanted to give it a try and see how it turned out. Uh, I'm probably going to put this into my emergency bug out bag or possibly give it to a friend of mine who is just starting out in survival. So, anyways, that's my uh, Nalgene water bottle kit, and uh, this is Survival ABCs, and I'll see you around until next time.